It's like opening up pouches of gold. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, these are just screaming. Today I'm going to use the Madagascar vanilla bean, the ground vanilla bean, and the Tahitian fleur de sel. There's so many different applications. Um, everything from, again, desserts, dry rubs, finishing. I like to do a, a really nice uh, thyme, vanilla bean thyme per blanc with a double cut uh, Kurobuda pork chop. Finishing a seared scallop with a truffle foam, truffle corn foam, and then right before it goes out, sprinkling just a little bit of the, the ground vanilla bean uh, over the top so that the warmth of the scallop and the, the fresh corn and the truffle and the effervescence that it just kind of is just so lively. This is perfect. We're making a Tahitian vanilla bean goat's cheese panna cotta. We're doing a Madagascar vanilla bean tomato marmalade. We're searing foie gras beautiful slices of toasted brioche. It's just going to be phenomenal. We've got a couple dessert wines, Vinsanto, and maybe we'll, we'll taste a couple to see what works with it, because you don't know until you try it, especially when it comes to some great wines, and we'll see what happens. First, we're going to go ahead and make the panna cottas. So we're going to take some milk, Chevre goat's cheese, fresh, and creamy goat's cheese. We're gonna soak a sheet and a half of gelatin. We're gonna lightly, lightly heat up the cream. Now this is a really delicate process because if you heat it up too much, it will curdle and you don't want that. Panna cotta should be nice and rich and creamy and smooth and the texture that you want with this dish. So now we soak the gelatin first so that it's nice and bloomed. And we're just going to lightly whisk this together. As this is uh, steeping, we're going to add some fresh lemon zest. And of course, we're going to season it with the Tahitian fleur de sel. And just a little bit of extra pinch ground Tahitian vanilla bean as well. There's nothing that could describe the intensity, especially on, on camera, of how wonderful the effervescence are and the floral notes of this product. I mean, it's so easy to work with and it's just always fresh. And then the fleur de sel, which is also one of my favorites. Nice and moist, just excellent. Great oils in there. So, mm. as soon as the cheese is melted into it and it's incorporated, that's when you want to pull this off the heat because if you let it sit too long, it'll start to curdle. Part of using um, both of the cheeses is that the creamy one adds a little bit more of the stability. It's kind of more like using heavy cream to this dish and it supports the crumbly goat's cheese, the more drier goat's cheese, and it helps it from not breaking. And it's almost there. It's really nice. And this should come out kind of like the consistency of almost buttermilk if you're looking for a point of reference. All right, and that is just done. Perfect. We'll give it a little taste. Check for seasoning. Mm. The vanilla and the lemon zest ha are so bright in flavor that they just, it really takes this to a, a beautiful level. It's just because it's so delicate and so soft, the panna cotta should just melt in your mouth. So now we're gonna take the gelatin leaf, strain it out, and we're just going to incorporate that now. And it should just slightly melt in, and dissolve. Put it in here, in this cup, and we're gonna pour them all the way to the brim, just a little bit below. And these will hold for a good three or four days. It's the oils in the bean that, that bring out this this flavor, so you have to extract those. The more that you extract those oils in the bean that I've found, the more flavor, a different level of flavor you're going to get versus taking the beans and just throwing them in a, in a mousse and just whipping whipped cream. That's one flavor. Maybe try toasting them off in the pan just a little bit so, so it livens it up, then put it in, inside the whipped cream and it's, oh. 
So the temp I just got chills. The temperature of of the cream uh, or the uh, the cheese and the milk just steeping is just enough to open up the uh, the vanilla beans. So I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator. Uh, now we're gonna make the Madagascar tomato vanilla bean marmalade. The most ripest tomato smell that you can smell. Fresh tomato. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. Mm. Now we don't overpower with the vanilla bean, just enough to complement the tomato itself. We're gonna concasse tomatoes. Start off with boiling water, score the tomato on the bottom with a little X. We go ahead and take the pit out and put that inside the boiling water for 45 seconds. And we submerge that directly in ice water. So we, we make the X so that the skin starts to peel, makes for easy peeling, and voila. If you have a fryer set up, you can dry these off with some paper towels and then you can deep fry these. And they're great as like little chips on top of like appetizers. They kind of leaf up and put a little bit of the Tahitian vanilla bean fleur de sel on top of them and they're really crispy and they're wonderful. So you can actually save these, they're wonderful, but we're not gonna use those today. Cut into quarters. I'm just gonna gently scoop the seeds out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay these inside the pan, a couple tablespoons of sugar. Let's see, we're gonna do the Madagascar on this one. It's like opening up pouches of gold. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, these are just screaming. These are screaming. Love this. This is just bundled with care. I'm actually going to just use a portion of it. I'm gonna keep this bundled up. I don't wanna untie this. I'm gonna just butterfly it slightly. Oh, savor the flavor. We're gonna add that right to the melting sugar, okay? Whatever I don't use, I'm gonna make my own sugar and I'll just set them right here on the sugar because this will just infuse my sugar alone. So we'll go ahead and just keep keep these in this sugar and then I'll just put this in a container and now when I need my vanilla bean sugar, I've got a nice uh, uh, infused sugar, self-made, so. Now what this sugar is gonna start doing is it's gonna start drawing the moisture out of the tomatoes themselves. And you don't wanna caramelize it, you wanna just stew it. And we're actually kinda like sweating the tomatoes. See all that extra liquid in there now? That's the that's the sugar, the natural juices from the tomato, and that delicious Madagascar vanilla bean. Mmm. It's just wonderful. And this process takes about 20 to 25 minutes, really low, low heat. You don't want to destroy the integrity of the tomatoes. So now you can see we're getting more and more of that liquid and that syrup, that natural, beautiful syrup. One of my favorite little tricks are these, balsamic. So what I've done is I've actually taken some balsamic vinegar and we reduced it down just a little bit with just a little bit of sugar. Sometimes I use like cardamom or we can put vanilla bean in here. You know, the vanilla bean's really nice. Simmer balsamic and vanilla bean and a little bit of sugar together and that's just wonderful. I didn't put vanilla bean in here because I didn't want to overpower the dish. So I reduced balsamic, a little bit of uh, sugar in the raw, and then we put it in this little transfer pipette, okay? And now that syrup is being reincorporated back into the tomatoes because it's reducing slow and patient cooking. And the smell is more intense. We have our beautiful brioche. We have our Madagascar vanilla bean tomato marmalade. We have our Tahitian vanilla bean panna cotta. And we have our candied balsamic pipettes. And we're missing one major, major ingredient. This beautiful foie gras. Yeah. Slightly warm your blade. Oh. I'm excited. Now what I like to do is 
we just kind of like to just lightly score the top of it. And of course, we're gonna season it with a little bit of the fleur de sel. The richness and the fattiness and that sweet flavor of the foie gras, again, complements the sweet, fragrant smell of the Tahitian vanilla bean fleur de sel. It is just, it's so complimentary. And then we're going to do some fresh cracked, cracked pepper. Nice and coated evenly. And then, of course, the other side is extremely jealous. And we're not gonna score the other side because we don't want to let too much of that fat escape. And then, nice and even. Now we're gonna sear the foie gras. I like to use cast iron pans because it gives it that real good caramelization and you want a quick, quick sear on your foie gras. So you don't want to render it out too much. So, ready? Now you see all that fat that's coming out? Watch this, watch this. That's the sound right there. Savor. We're gonna toast the brioche in that fat. I was gonna get some olive oil, but uh-uh, no way. Right there, look at that. Why not, right? That is flavor. Oh, smell again. You can smell now. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Panna cotta. So I'm actually going to kind of make this into like a little canal. Nice light micro greens. Make a little bed. And then foie gras in there, like so. Pieces of brioche. And then we take one of our little pipettes. Let's see, put that right there. Pepper. And a little of the fleur de sel of the vanilla bean. Voila, we have Tahitian vanilla bean Fleur de sel for the foie gras. We have the Madagascar vanilla bean tomato marmalade and the Tahitian ground vanilla bean for the goat's cheese panna cotta. Bon appetit. And some of my favorite wines are these late harvest wines. And they just go exceptionally well with foie gras. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Sometimes I, I do like little demos of I'm not happy, you know, but I'm really happy. Good. I'm, I'm super excited. I didn't get to smell these. Oh, dude. <laughs>